I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add SATA connectors to a power supply that either doesn't have enough of them or has none at all. So we get this 300 watt hybrid power supply in this system. It's a, uh, I want to say circa 2006 power supply. It uh, it was run the time when SATA hard drives were a thing, but SATA optical drives weren't quite yet common. So the power supply itself has two SATA connectors on one strand, along with some four pin bollocks connectors intended to feed hard drives. Well, I'm going to be using both of these connectors on a uh, solid state drive and a hard drive. And as you can see, or maybe able to see, it just wouldn't be quite right to try to hook up a DB drive up in the top of the case and have a uh, hard drive down at the bottom of the case off this one strand. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a uh, SATA lead to this power supply. Now, one way you can do it is you can purchase the Molex to SATA adapters. That's a very common way of doing it. But when you're out of them, and or if you would rather just uh, add on SATA connectors directly into the power supply, um, you can do it this way as well. So what I've already done here is I have went ahead and snipped off this last Olex connector on this one strand. So this strand used to have two 4-pin Molex connectors and a floppy disk connector. We obviously, don't, obviously do not need the floppy disk connector for this, so uh, we can just do away with that. So what you're also going to need is you're going to need a donor set connector. Let's say if you have a power supply that's gone bad, or if you have a cheap end power supply, whatever reason, let's say if you have an old power supply and you have some set of connectors handy, you can snip that lead off of the donor supply. You just want to make sure that you have at least a few inches of wire available. So that way you can easily tie this in. Like so. So to start off, um, we have five wires on this connector. The yellow is your plus 12. You have two black, which are ground. You have a red, which is your plus 5 volt, and you have an orange, which is your plus 3.3 volt. Generally, most SATA devices nowadays, like hard drives, optical drives, you name it, SSDs, they generally do not need that 3.3 volt supply connection. Now, for my case, we definitely don't need the 3.3 volt supply for an um, optical drive. There were some... I believe there were some SSDs, older SSDs that made use of 3.3 volts. I do have an old um, SSD laying around that actually did make use of 3.3 volts, but in this case we're not going to be needing 3.3 volts, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and snip off the orange wire just right about here. Again, as mentioned, we're not going to need it, so just snip it down as close as you can to the connector. There you have it. So this little donor lead has a uh, SATA connector, your, your standard SATA power connector. And uh, also got this little connector here. This is a 5 volt only connector. And this uh, you can this actually would power a uh, laptop optical drive that was installed on a desktop, more or less a slim optical drive. That's what this will power. I'm going to actually leave that on there, although we're not going to need it. So, so in addition, you're going to need a soldering iron, some solder, which in this case we have lead-free rosin core solder. You'll need some heat shrink tubing. You'll need some wire strippers. And I also have soldering paste flux here. This helps tend the wires, which we'll, we'll focus on that shortly. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to strip the wires on both the cable coming from the power supply as well as our section that we're splicing in. You don't need a whole lot of wire. What I'm doing now is I am twisting these wires here. So I'm going to do the same for this section right here. And just funny thing to note guys, I got a kitty cat in here. <laughs> it's a cat that's uh been wandering, wandering around for quite some time, belonging to someone in the neighborhood. Used to be scared of me. Now it comes right to me. And it's funny, since I'm getting ready to solder, I uh, prop the back door open, and of course, kitty cat comes right in here. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm doing this and also keeping a watch on him. I done had to shoo him off the uh, white table once now, actually two times. He's at my feet right now. So again, twisting these wires. Okay, so now what we need to do is go ahead and install some heat shrink. And also watch this kitty cat over here. I got a couple pieces of heat shrink in there that are kind of. Let's see, they're just about where I need them in size. One's a little long, but. You just cut it to size. Yes, kitty cat, I see you. Here's my little helper. So we got four pieces of heat shrink here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, slide these on to the individual wires. Okay, so I got the uh, heat shrink slid onto the four wires. Now it's time to go ahead and prep the uh, the wires to splice them together. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, twist the wires together. I'm just got to wrap them together, really. Doesn't have to be perfect. Try to get as good as you can, though. But the solder will, will ensure that the connections are secure. That's why we're using solder here. And, of course, I uh, got our helper here. Don't need him near the soldering iron. Come on, cat. I don't, I don't need you to get burnt. <laughs> Come on. Get down. <laughs> Twitch, he's twitching his tail. Like, I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> don't need you to get burnt. Okay, so now that I've got the wires twisted together, so I'm going to dip this in the flux here. Now the uh, the solder itself does have the flu the flux already in it, so that's what the uh, rosin core is. But I found that with these wires, it's it generally works a lot better when you actually add additional flux. It tends to help the wires uh, helps the solder 
better adhere to the metal than the wires. We're going to do these one at a time here. solder but yeah try to straighten that out just a little bit all right we'll do the remaining three You can probably see why I have the uh, the door propped open, the back door open, because this is always very smoky. It's the, really the flux. All right, so now just need to go ahead and get this bent over and slide the heat shrink over the connection just like that And of course, be sure to wash your hands after handling this stuff, especially in the case of uh, if you're using lead solder. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to heat the uh, heat shrink to shrink it down. You can use a, uh, a lighter for this, or you can use your solder and iron. Just be careful to not overheat the uh, wire. Or overheat the uh, heat shrink tubing. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just enough to where it'll stay, stay in place. Okay, so now we have an additional SATA connector on this power supply. That way we can actually plug in power to an optical drive. So that is one method of adding SATA connectors to a power supply that didn't, it either didn't have enough or didn't have any at all. Now in the case of your power supply didn't have any at all, um, it could be a very old unit, and I would I would suggest that you um, study the uh, outputs of that unit carefully to make sure that they're sufficient for your system, because older power supplies sometimes may not have enough 12 volt capacity. They because older units sometimes tend to have more of their outputs on the 5 volt side of things, in the 3.3 volt side of things versus 12 volts. So. That's how you can add in an additional SATA connector to your power supply. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.
Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.